because we're light at seven o'clock. So life while Andrew's cooking. Oh, oh, oh! Look, proper spaghetti. Yeah. Oh, no way. No way. <laughs> See, this is a problem when you yeah. go live. There's like a 20 second gap from pressing the button that they're going to see this. They're going to have seen Andy's spaghetti. So that's going to be what the first thing people see on this month's live. No one's going to be jealous of Andy's tea today. It, it looked very disappointing, didn't it? So um, not, she's not just having spaghetti. She's having meatballs with it as well. Do you want to see the meatballs? I'll do no. some meatballs. No, meatballs. No, no one wants to see meatballs, Andrew. <laughs> so you're, you you're in meatballs. Sorry, folks. <laughs> Your internet's <laughs> terrible, Andy. But yeah, welcome to this month's live Q&A that we're doing a little bit differently. So hopefully, it, if it's gone through properly, everyone should be able to have a bit of a look in, be they a member or not. And obviously the mem the questions are limited just to the members. So gives you a bit of a behind the scenes of what you get every single month with this, along with obviously all the other videos, live matches, and that sort of stuff that we do every month with... Lots of guests and lots more lined up. And Andrew's drinking Heineken. Yeah. We do, we do need to decide, Andrew, what we're doing with um, William. That's Rafters. That's Rafters. That's the one I got left from uh, last Thursday. It looks a bit lonely. Did, did you actually listen to what I just said? No, sorry, Rich. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> we need to decide what we're doing with William when we go out filming. Yes, can't wait for it. Um... I, I, w I definitely want to cover Waggler, you know, some form of Waggler, whether it's Big Waggler or we could, in fact, that's that's the point. We could do Pellet Waggler, but then reminisce about what he used to do with a Big Waggler in like Balls of Sticky Mag and things like that. He used to do it at Larford, he used to do it at Gold. That can be like a podcasty thing, I reckon. Uh, and then sort of bomb over the top, maybe. That'd be right good than that. Well, yeah. wag wagon bomb. Oh, I ain't going to be able to sleep. So excited about that. Be really? so good. Don't you think, though, it's proper, like the southern way of pellet waggler fishing is totally like the way he does it and all those lot down there it's dead different from like the foam waggler muggy all of it's, that the it? venues are so different isn't it big old like, carp, carp and they've got to sort of hang themselves on the a field similar isn't it? on one of the lakes there you could catch them like that there similar rich yeah depends on the wind and it island bull can be like that but anyway let's see that that is the next guest you think isn't it mr william raisin when you're out with him middle of 12. Ne next Tuesday, I think, or Wednesday. Next Tuesday, Wednesday, 12. Wednesday, 12. Out with him then, aren't you? That is the next guest the appearance we'll be doing. And then we've got uh, Joe the week after, Joe Carras. Looking yeah, forward yeah. to that. So Catch this is... Fixed, damn yeah. veg. That's filming dates as well before anyone says anything. That's not the release date, <laughs> so don't come at me. It'll take like a week or two to get everything edited. But yeah, plenty coming. And we've also got your practice match for Fishermania that we're releasing on the day or on the evening before? Yeah, well, on, very close that. to that, yeah. We, we did. We had to sneak one in, didn't we? Because the way things landed. So, yeah, we went to Westwood. Westwood! Westwood. <laughs> so we went there and had a practice and I drew exactly the same peg as I drew at Fishmania. Oh, go ahead, Jay, lad, did you? So it was, it was good. It worked out good in that way. And, do you know what I mean? A bit of reflecting on what went wrong and all of that and doing things different. And it was it looks, really, really good. Looks like it's fishing his brains out, mate. It's really good, isn't it? Very, very, very good. I don't know what's going on, but they are very mm -hmm. active and they're eating. Right, OK. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, and also, no. you've been busy on... Um, 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 I've forgotten, UK Champs. That's the one, isn't it? Oh, I'm liking that. I ain't supposed to have a sponsor about that. No, I've, we, we spoke about the first one, but we've not done makings, wasn't it? Because we were having a coaching day at um, Marston Fields on the same day. Yeah. Can you tell us how you went on, or is that, is that all to be revealed? Oh, it doesn't matter, it will do it both. We'll just keep telling people, you know what I mean? If I've won <laughs> something, we'll just keep telling them until they get are you, sick. Are you, are you, did you get another big check? No, I didn't do that. I got a little trophy. I thought they did big checks on them. No, a little check. A little check we have to give to the bank on them. Ah, so, it was very good. It was only a round, wasn't it? It was the second round of the UK champs at Makings, and I drew the plums off just for a change in it. <laughs> but, but it, it was good because it's. Uh, I, don't, I don't know I don't any know numbers. Of like what? What phase were you on? Where were you? Three. I was on Thames on. No, I wasn't. I was on seven on phase three. I've never fished on, phase three. Right? Is that the one where they've done all new and everything? All new, all new. Last time I was on it, 
was I was on the same lake and I was almost on the same peg, but there was an island that did nothing now. All been redone and it was I've drawn an M peg with a little bit of wind blowing in and it was yeah, it was solid. Many carps. But I've just mugged like fifty carp. Have you done mugging again? Yeah, I caught quite a few in my feed. I've had like ten in my feed. I set up so much kit. Like feeders, wagglers, methods, <laughs> up the edge, long on bottom, short on me, in the edge, and I've used one rig all day. Go ahead, Jay, lad. So good. But yes, it's going well. I is currently winning the UK championships. I think I'm about £60 clear on weight. Was oh, it is you it, and then you two wins, is there? I think there's three or four people. I think there's me, Pile, Tom Caladine, is it? There might be one other as well. So it's three or four of us, but I think I've got about 60 pound clear at the minute. You went to lad. And where's but, left? Uh, rookery and box. Oh, Ooh, yeah. That'll do, mate. That'll do. <laughs> Different, isn't it? Yeah. So rookery's yeah. going to break me, though, because I'm going to have to leave in a minute. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mate. Quarrel. Yeah. Literally, as soon as we're done, you need to leave and you might just make it. Yeah, maybe. There's so something, anyway. something, something a bit different about you tonight, Jay, lad. You know, you've got like hooks and that line coming out of your mouth and like winders oh. and all that. Wait, wait oh. where's your prep? Come on. I nearly did. I couldn't be arsed tonight. I'm tired. Shocking. I've been grouting all day. Where's the dedication? Where's the dedication, Jamie? <laughs> oh, right. Absolutely it is, shocking. It is, mate. <laughs> oh. yeah. Right. Should we do some questions? Because that's what we yeah. actually... Just let me tell you, Hang on. Tell me that. Tell me that. <laughs> we'll do that story. That, that first comment is that one I sent you on, he sent a private message, Mark Thompson. Yeah, he's um, a legend. I want his kid to be on winning ways, like really, really. I was walking along at the seaside. Some little kid got dive bombed by a seagull. He dropped his ice cream, fell on it and started crying his eyes out. Red in the face, screaming blue murder. My 14-year-old son moved towards him and I was thinking he was going to help him. He stopped, pointed and shouted, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Not a question, but like nice little story. Brutal. <laughs> yeah, I like so, it. Not only is Andy ruining fishing, is ruining children. That didn't sound right. Um, Mark <laughs> Mark Wibley, a mate's got a match on Upper Bembo at Old Huff. How should he approach it? Oh, it's been good. Upper was good this weekend. Where did someone? I, had, to... I had a message uh, the other day. Someone's in a match on uh, Upper, and I've told them it's all big car, but they just put a lot of stockers in, haven't they? There's a lot of F1s in Upper as well, but you need big carapies to win. In Upper? I never thought there was, Jay, lad. I thought low was the F1s. I thought no, there no, was big carap, mate. No, there's always been lots in Upper as well. Um, lots, lots. Mm, but yeah, right, Upper, right. dead simple. Nothing lives within... Every fish lives either within a metre of the near bank or a metre of the far bank. Nothing lives down the middle other than skin bobs and things like that. So a crush, you need to like tap like five hard pellets and sit and wait, be patient for the first three hours, like on one or two lines, and then down the edge, micros and corns are always best. But I think we've said this on here before, when it comes to fishing down the edge, you're on upper in particular, get your land in it and have a poke where you're planning on fishing because you need to fish to the next pallet. The fish always feed on the next pallet better than anywhere else on upper. But make sure you're not fishing on the big stones. Because on the corners of the pegs over the years, all the big stones have fell in. And I mean, the big ones are like the size of your fist. So if you try and fish on them, your bait disappears in them and there's fish in your peg and it's really hard to get a bite. So have a little poke about, try and find a flat, smoothish spot and fish there, close as you can to the next peg. But it is as simple as that. Then it? There's nothing else to do. Big pots at once before you go on it. And then micros and corners, always the best down the edge on there as well. Dead, dead simple, isn't it? But you, you doubled your weight last hour at Old Oak, haven't you? Oh, it's ridiculous, yeah. But uh, the one I've um, told about is like, is only fishing nine till two. That's Bob, that's rubbish hours, that, isn't it? There's, oh, because yeah, they're yeah. not allowed to be coming in at two, at two o'clock, aren't they? Not me. Yeah, yeah, that's not good on there if it's that. But that later, five hours. Yeah, yeah, just it, isn't it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's um, a proper old boy, let's get to the pub match, isn't it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Andy's match. Um, Aaron Braithwaite asked a question a few months back regarding pros and cons of hook length, as it's something I've never got on with. After watching your answers and some video watching, I bit the bullet and must admit it's changed my fishing no end. Feel confident with a loop, etc. now, as before it was putting me off having an extra loop so close to the hooks. You can't let it bother you, can you? It doesn't bother the fish. 
As long no. as it's nice and straight and tight, them loops being two inches or even, uh, don't bother them when they're eating. No, do you, don't no. Do you actually buy back. into the diameter making a difference or not? Because you did that filming with Matrix, didn't you? I don't know. I think it makes a difference how your hook behaves sometimes in extremes. But I think it makes a difference with confidence, and that's all that matters to me. Yeah, definitely. I think it's more so how it's falling in it. If it's too, if your hook's too heavy or something like that, it's going to make a difference in it. Like what's going on with the rest of your feed. Yeah. As for the machine, you're like, there's no way, not a chance on this earth can they see your line and the colour water is at the minute. At Kobe 3 today, is like, you can't see anything within an inch, you know what I mean? So, no, yeah. with this, like, 16, it's not made a blind bit of difference today. Nothing. Wow. That red 033 or whatever it was seemed quite good. Yeah, clearly, lad. <laughs> Amazing stuff, that. Is that you caught on? Is that, is that we caught on at Makings Day, lad? Yeah, I just use that rig you give me. That's That's out on Wednesday. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Next week. Yeah. yeah. Um, Paul Brammer, hi from Holiday in Tunisia. Um, my local club water has a very silty bottom and a steep slope. Was wondering how you would fish it when pellets work best, only carp in the water. Oh, it depends how steep it is, whether you can fish in it or not. I mean, ideally you want to be on that slope, no brainer. But I think he's mentioning it because it sounds like it's too steep. It'd be like skipping lines. As soon as they blow it, just move. Keep moving lines all over the way. It's massive on them sort of things, isn't it? If you've got too steep a slope to actually hold any bait on, you could try fishing just up it and feeding at the bottom of the slope on the silt, but still fishing on the slope. That'd work. But if not, just feed minimal bait, get a few bites. And then once it fizzes, once it goes nasty, just leave it, go somewhere else. I mean, plumb up, start again, do it flipping 20 times if you need to. That's what Westwood's like. Westwood. Westwood. Exactly the same. Do you, know, do, you, do you know what to do when all else fails as well? Go on. Do you know, like, Back in the day, Big Pot fixes everything. Yeah, just be shallow. No, just be shallow. Shallow fishing fixes everything, doesn't it, j Lab? And silly venues. It would on that sort of thing, innit? Or a big, big pot and worms, but I never like going down that route. <laughs> no, just, just be fish shallow all the way. Do, do you not think when it fizzes as well that the fish are off the bottom? Because obviously they're like rooting around and obviously I think it's better for shallow fishing then in that, in that fizz, in that bubbles. Maybe. I just think they can't see it. When it kicks off enough, I... I think they physically can't see anything and they mm. just everything up. That's why pace works really well, isn't it? Big like big sucky bait. Yeah. Yeah. But no, new lines is the one. Well, Endless. 20, 30, keep on going. <laughs> um, yeah. Pete Maltby. Evening fellas, got a club match on Meriden Canal, a Bay Malton Water. Any ideas what the stock is and Ooh. how to fish it? Is that the one we did some? Yeah, the donut you one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's the yeah. roundest lake in the world. It's like laser profile and everything. Basically, there's like whoever walks into the MPEG, they're going to win wherever the gap is. Uh, but it's fishing really well, full of fish, full of F1s, but it's so silly. Is it? Have you been on there recently, have you? No, we've only been on there once when we were filming for our book. We sat on there for an hour once. All oh, right, right, OK. But we never yeah, fished so properly. Lots, lots of big old carp in that you'll... Might catch Dobbin, but it's going to be F1. It's just ping pellets across shallow um, and just fish shallow up in, up in the sticks. Uh, all pellets. Uh, yeah, dead simple fishing, but it's usually the MPEGs that win. Whoever's on, got a bit of room, just walk the fish around, it tends to be. I wouldn't fish anything down there. It's so silty. It's, it's not still, though, is it? It's Pete, isn't it? Yeah, it's Pete, yeah. That's oh, on Pete. What are you doing in there? Yeah. Oh, I Pete. Oh, Pete. Yeah, what makes it so clear? <laughs> It's always been like that, and it? You want to be wherever the muck is, innit? Wherever the muck is, all the fish are there because it's a perfect yeah. brown one, innit? Yeah. yeah. I like need to go there. That's, yeah, yeah. That's David's Outdoor Adventures is his name. All right, lads, I have a match this weekend on Cudmore on Moors. How would you go about fishing it? And fly. Take fly rods. Get some uh, buzzers. Uh, and some deer heads, no. Um, yeah. Start off right across on ground bait and maggots or micros and expanders, whatever. Um, and then you want a shallow swim. There's a lot of big F1s in there. Uh, and I'll probably just do pellets shallow. There's no hide or anything like that. So just fish four mils shallow, but in the deepest bit of water because it's really shallow across. Um, 
and I'll just switch between them. Edges, edges don't really work well for some reason. I don't know why. There's a lot of mm. lot of silt and horrible stuff in the edges. Really deep. Um, so yeah, just be shallow down the middle and tight across as tight as you can get. They'll come into like eight or ten inches. You know what I mean? Really shallow. And not loads of little baby fishing or anything. Um, so you're fishing for F1s, but certain pegs there's lots of carp, but the carp will show themselves up. So have a muggy mug as well. But they're hard to mug. Some of they, they were hard to mug, but like when we did that video, they were like the easiest fish in the world to catch, weren't they? Crazy, isn't it? Just without a pole above their heads, it were frightening. Yeah, it's nuts. There's not that, a lot of fish is... in there, but it's probably just going for eggs or anything like that. There's none in it. That was the thing with fly fishing, because you've not got anything above the heads and you've not got the splash. It's like the amount of times you can miss a fish and just drop oh. it straight back on the nose. It's ridiculous. Like there yeah. is genuine. They still start searching for it, aren't they? Like, oh, where's that gone? It's ridiculous. Isn't it? Fucking Andy Ford was talking about it the other day at UK Champs. He said it's proper exciting. He does a bit of that. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I absolutely loved it. I want to do some river fishing now and everything. Chucking up stream and watching it down. Got to be on it. Do that. We'll do that in the do like some proper grayling stuff in the winter. That's good. Mm. Yeah, let's I'm do not that. Really challenge on it, but yeah, we'll we'll go and have a, a day that, fishing. Up. That's all right. That doesn't involve casting. That's just like long rod and lob it out and follow it like try it down take a step down and so yeah she's a stick float she's a stick float rich oh, yeah, like, ge so genuinely those stretches like if you fished maggot and just trotted it down properly it'd be scary would it really be that good oh, it? On the oh. Oh. yeah you, like all you're not allowed to is you like proper purist territory you're not allowed to then yeah you'll get like they'll slap you with oh. a flat cap or something um <laughs> Steve Cummins, have a match on Newpool at Tunnel Barn this weekend. Any info? Oh, it's, it's been good, hasn't it? It's been it's well, isn't it? It? Yeah. Good, Newpool, I fish casters and worms everywhere. Literally. Yeah. yeah, just fish to your cover with casters, fire casters, so whatever cover you've got, you'll have cover on every single peg. Um, and put a worm on the up fish on the bottom, fish cast a shallow above it, do exactly the same in the edge. And then last hour, put some ground bait in the edge right on the next pallet. And a few carp come in later on. But yeah, simple as that. Just one line with casters up and down. It's the way to go. Yeah. Well, all, mate. Yeah, all the fishing in the cover. Pellets aren't, don't fish with pellets, not right at all. Oh, the LJ, lad. Yeah, up and down with casters. It's on a new pool, I think. It'd be quite nice, quite fair. Okay. I like that. Maybe a few dobbing fish. One. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you were like shocked. You were just like disappointed in me because I didn't mention pellets or something. I know. Yeah. I was yeah. waiting for the pellets, but didn't, yeah. didn't happen, mate. No, it's not right. It's on the bottom. So, um, William Rivera, we're going to say. How do you feel about the match this weekend at Docklow? A pint of maggots and a tin of meat is all that's allowed. You'd love that, Lance, because you'd be done in 20 minutes and you'd be in the pub. That, a what? A rule where you only had a pint of maggots and a tin of meat? Yeah, it must be a budget, challenge type match. Different, yeah, isn't I it? Would, I wouldn't last that long. Yeah. You won't last long. You'd be gone after an hour. You've got nothing left! I've got <laughs> nothing left! <laughs> I'd have to go scavenging for worms, wouldn't I? I'd have to go digging. Yeah, what will it be? You, if it is, it's eking it out, isn't it? That's what you've got to do, is be clever and eke it out. What would you do? Up, would you keep the meat or like blend five it? hours, aren't you? Then using it all really quick and emptying it and then having to pack up. You want to eke it out for five hours, don't you? Mm. I just slap some maggots or something. Wouldn't even feed, just slap a maggot. <laughs> That'd be the one, isn't it? <laughs> Slap mm. the maggot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Farley, <laughs> after watching Nick Speed's Method Masterclass, how have you both adapted your method feeder fishing, i.e. what ground bait and micros are you using and how do you prepare them? I just decided, decided I'm shit at it and decided not to do it anymore. Yeah, I've not, I've not fished this to watch that either because I'm like, I'm nowhere near that good. I'm not doing it. Yeah, <laughs> leave that alone. <laughs> Weird, mate. Like, we never get to fish a method. I feel no. hybrid for the first time in flipping months and months and months of a day. It's just, I don't do that type of fishing anywhere we go. It's all yeah. snaky lakes and short and stuff like that in it and shallow and, yeah, it doesn't come into it at all. Yeah, but no, if, if we did, I'd copy speedy, simple as. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. 
Yeah. The, the, the biggest thing was the four ounce tip on it. That was a quarter ounce tip. That was a joke. A joke that how much sense it made and keeping your feeder on the bottom in place, but still seeing everything. And even when the fish were on, they weren't, it was just so good. That yeah. was an impressive thing. Yeah, proper. But then mix think, does depend on where you're going, doesn't it? I think the problem is a lot of it's, you've almost got, the way he does it with all the prep and everything, you've got to commit to it before you're fishing. So on yeah. venues where there might just be one or two feeder shut pegs, it's hard to do it all just in case, isn't it? Like so many, you turn up, you're like, oh, might actually have a feeder chuck today. And Yeah, well, fishery pellets make it so hard as well. Yeah. Mm. It's really hard that you've got to buy them on the day that if it's not somewhere you're going, that then not make it hard to prep mm. on the method feeder, doesn't it? If you're doing it yeah. with technical methods as well. Yeah. And then you get Coppin's pellets and you have to try and mould them on a feeder and it all just goes... Uh, <laughs> no, throw a waggle, that'll do. Um, Daz B, after advice, please, you hear about these matches where you feed three to four pints of bait, either maggots or pellets. How do you do this? I saw feeding a pint. Advice, please. It's constant, isn't it? Do you know what? I've, I've coached a, a bloke today, Colby Free, and he says he's never fed more than a pint and a half. Uh, so I yeah. ordered like four pints of maggot at the shop. And, you know, we fed all day, fed all day, and we got through four pints. Well, it's sort of like two o'clock, and you couldn't believe he'd fed that much. You know what I mean? As long as it's like constant and there's like something's keeping you going. I think, obviously, match conditions when people are feeding around you sort of follow suit, don't you? But if you're in matches where people aren't necessarily feeding around you, you just sort of feed to your bites, don't you? And fish to your bites, that kind of thing. It all depends on the type of day and the type of venue and all that, doesn't it? Yeah, how you're but, fishing as well. You know what yeah. I mean? It's still always, I can't think of many matches where you wouldn't feed a pint of bait still. Doing minimum a pint goes in, doesn't it? Every match in the summer, definitely. Even the flip of winter, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 How often have we fed like three, four pints of maggots of casters for the silvers and that? It happens, doesn't it? Yeah, it's just constant feeding, isn't it? But not big X or anything like that. It's creating composition with. A volume of bait and the amount of places we go to now they've got that many fish you have to feed them or they, they won't stick yeah. around just disappear don't they yeah yeah someone's feeding next to you a load of bait and you're not they're off in it so uh, yeah mm -hmm. um lee bramham i did a coaching day with andy in about 2005 and we went for a pint after he said i was the first person he coached who said are we having a pint am i still the first person no. Oh, hey, Lee. <laughs> no, I've been for lots of pints since then, but you were definitely the first. I remember that, mate. Yeah, 2000. That was a long... Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, was that Cudmore? Is what? Is that Cudmore? Yeah, Cudmore on Suez, it would have been. But yeah. back when... Remember when Suez used to be proper, we were like, you had to put platforms in your pegs and like massive F1s and Barber was still in it. Oh, it was amazing, Jay. Yeah. That's a couple of pints. That was actually ages ago, wasn't it? What's that, 15 years? 2005, with the neck and the rest. 18. 18 years. Years yeah. ago, Rick. Really. It, it would have been one of my first ever customers then, so I started in 2005. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bless. Go on, Lee. Um, <laughs> William Rivera again. I've got an idea for a new sort of campaign next season now that Jamie has completed it. How do I get in touch with Rich about it? Um, ping us a message on Winning Ways or Facebook. Um, yeah, I'm going to what? sort these dogs out. Aren't I? That, that's if you, Jamie actually wants to do it again. Yeah. You, get, you, you ended up hating it, didn't you, at one point? Only because you planted the seeds, Richard, that it was going to be a nightmare. It, so, it was looking like it at one point. It was looking like that, but let's have a point. So we sorted it in the end. But yeah, no, I'll do it again. I'll do anything for the right price. <laughs> <laughs> What, a premium rate, like 10 grand a year membership or something? <laughs> Do <I need> <laughs> Whatever you want, if you pay me enough. But yeah, but yeah it's, it's not finished yet either. We have got, obviously, that fish practice that sort of comes under the campaign, but a bit yeah. different. But we've also got the practice or semi-final of Fish Midlands that we'll be filming and the final if you get through and potentially yeah, practice matches. Back in. We'll, we'll try and do some form of practice if we get time. What, what are we on now? July. So, yeah, we need something for August anyway. Yeah. Are you, are you uh, so when you do make the final, Jay, are you banning me from coming interviewing you? You're, you're not allowed anywhere near me. <laughs> anywhere near me. I'm getting a restraining order for that. 
That means... Get ready to fish your final boy. <laughs> no, you're not allowed anywhere near me then either. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, no like hyping crowds up behind him. I would not do a thing like that, would I? Be live up. Be live up. Yeah, you didn't. Uh, you did, yeah, well. Where are we? Steve Howe, good evening, legends. Still buzzing from last Thursday's coaching day. Anyone thinking about doing one, don't hesitate. It's top class. Um, William Ribera again. One more thing. Rigs, once you've made a rig up and use it for a session and put it back on the winder, how long or how many sessions would you get out of that rig, not including changing hook length? I'm going to get two very different answers here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mine never make it back onto the winder. Done. Oh, mine do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mine do. I mean, joking apart, obviously, if it's been a, like, a right bagging session, not that I've spent too many of those, but if it's been a bagging session, then I'll never reuse a rig. But if we've just got a few fish in it, then I always make sure I'll change up length regardless. And obviously, check, check around your shots and just move your fingers up and down the line. It's all right. I mean, heck, I've still got winders from years and years ago. You know what I mean? Obviously, natural water, things like that. You just... You never see the light of day, so nothing wrong in that respect. As long as it's like not out in the elements and things like that, it'd be fine. But as a rule, yeah, you should probably do what Jamie does. <laughs> We've had this question before, though. The only reason I do it is because the match that I'm fishing, I don't fish any other than qualifiers or big events from March until October. Every match is worth a lot of money, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Every don't you don't want any weak links at all, do you? It's just it's got to be bang on. It's got to be tailor made for that situation. But if I yeah. went and fished an open match, I might do. I yeah. might be like, oh, I've got, I'll save them. But because it's only ever a qualifier or a final, it's got to be right on it. Mm. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, um, Stephen Revel, hello. Apart from any of you, who would you like to see win a big final? Oh, I want Matty to win one. What, Matty Dawes? Yeah, I'd like your dad to win. As well, be nice to see one fish out because he's pulled like out. Mikey win one, love Mikey. Oh, Mikey would be nice. Oh, yeah, I'd like Mikey to win one as well. Perry, lot, and any of the lads that have put the time in, I've got so much respect for, and everyone should get a chance now. Again, it's nice if we could evenly distribute it, definitely. Then, yeah, but yeah, giving then, yeah. Perry Stone in the most finals without winning one. Oh, yeah, Perry. Yeah, yeah, I'd love Perry to win one as well. I saw Perry the other day at, um, at Medellin. Yeah. No, there's loads. There's flipping it. If we thought about that, I'd, I'd list 30 people if I thought about it. Dale, I'd love to see Dale win one. Dale, Dale Shepard. Yeah, I'd love to see Dale win one. Yeah. What, like... what would be the reaction, though, if, like, one of the international qualifiers or something like that won it? Do you reckon it'd kick off? It, it'd probably be a good thing for the publicity to create abroad, though. Wouldn't yeah. it? You just got is to be there, is, Have we talked about this before? Is there anything to stop us going across there to like. Yeah, enter? It's, it's an invited match, isn't it? Oh, is it? Is it? I wouldn't say they don't get long turned. They're not, do they like they do hard, though, would you? No, because they can't fit many on that lake. On that, All right. On the, I, I don't That's know. Half the drill, isn't it? Right. Yeah. I might be wrong, but I thought, is there not qualifiers for the that sort of thing i don't Maybe, know yeah. i got a feeling that there was some sort of like regional qualifiers that you had to fish to get through to the main qualifier or something but, yeah, uh, I don't, I don't, yeah honestly don't know i don't know how that is but it, it's all good isn't it? it's all good um and dave kell rich if you had to trade up and work with some professional anglers who would you choose <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well. The power because it'd be a lot more relaxed and he wouldn't answer that. No. You'd have nothing to edit ever. It'd be like a flipping <laughs> mine, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Don't know. It is genuine thought. Like when you get too old and like die, who's going to replace you? Don't know. We'll just keep going, Richard. What, like Zimmer frame challenges? That's it, you know. Who it. can make it to the peg before the end of the match? <laughs> <laughs> um, Be having a wee every 10 minutes. <laughs> I do now. <laughs> um, Tom Stanfield, hi lads. Well done, Jamie, on qualifying. Andy, Andy needs to get a shift on. You're, yeah, last you're chance actually doing on Wednesday. Last chance saloon on Wednesday. What, Lindome? 
I've got some golden meals left, I think, and maybe, but yeah, that's my last fish on Wednesday. Mm. Only two left, isn't there? That and Holcroft. Hayfield. Is, no, Lindo, not like 300 pegs now, is it? It's just a normal. No, just a normal under peg. Oh, if you want 20. It'd be ridiculous, yeah. wouldn't it? Some weight on there. It'll be good. You want Loco. Loco will do winning. Many casters. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you need lots of casters. My ears um, just... <laughs> go ahead. Uh, weird, um, eh? Owen Clark, have you actually noticed the Sonia Bates pellet flavours to make a difference in your fishing, or is it more for the sake of trying something different to the person at the side of you? It's confidence, just all it? confidence think, in it. Uh, I used to love that pineapple and coconut when I first tried that, then it's been offy, now it's salty caramel because it tastes amazing. And it I is, think... If it? It, yeah, just it's confidence. If you think something works, like colorings, flavorings, things like that. It's going to make you fish better because you've got confidence in it. Yeah, I just like how it smells on me. It is like, yeah. it's so good. It's just like, oh, yes, it makes you all happy. You're like, ah. Oh, <laughs> I've, never, ah, ah, yeah. but it, I've never settled on the fishy minions. Like, add a tip. No, and it's got like, like, Yeah, it makes you think of old school, doesn't it? Like magic and lake and all of them, that ground bits. Oh, brassum and vanilla. Well, it makes you think of, doesn't it? It's just a nostalgic. <laughs> the fish <laughs> do not even know it's going on. It's just different. You know what I mean? Fishy palate because they see it and it's a palate. Yeah. Not because it tastes like a strawberry. No. Mm. It? Um, it's nice. Don't go to it. Da Daniel Morgan, when's Andy going to AA? Mm. It's, this, is the, this is the not, not, point, not percent one, this one, actually. In line for? <laughs> yeah, I'm not applying for. I, yeah, I, this is the only time I drink in the month I'll have you know, actually. What's every, that? uh, What's I wouldn't say Monday, but it's whenever we do one of these, that's the only time I drink it in a month. And Saturdays and Sundays, and then now we got on Monday. No, no, I've cut, I'm cut down. I don't, I, don't, I don't drink Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I know it's a Monday today, but it's because it's one of these. I need, I need something like that, just, just to chill, just to relax, to get a bit nervous. Yeah, for this. Well, you don't like talking to people. You're a bit no. nervous and yeah, <laughs> quiet and shy. Isn't he? That's what it is. <laughs> Let's throw that fib in as well. <laughs> um, Mark Shipley got to um, got to meet G Big J last week at Hallcroft. Had a chat and a cheeky selfie. Surprised me. He wanted a selfie, but each to their own. Oh, did you want a selfie with Mark? Of course I did. So, <laughs> you know how much of a people person I am, Richard. Go on, Jay, like. It's just turned what? into lies and lies and lies. <laughs> um, next, you'll be like, like, I'm good at tanning or something. Yeah. Maybe I'll just throw that in. Um, Ian Doxley, how about paste at Gold Valley? Is that a pasty one? No, you can't do paste with Will. Will, no. Joe, Joe will do paste. Joe's doing paste with us. Oh, yeah. Shearsby Joe. Valley, we know it. Yeah. Place, yeah. Tornado and Hurricane. and Tornado, Hurricane, Sunset and Willow. And um, Jason Lodge, good evening. Question is I fished Aston Park last week on Bills. Nice steady start in the mud, nice clean bites until until it turned into chaos. Drop pot size, stock ground bait, but no better. Chaos. It's too many in peg. Is that is that where we are? Is that the, no. the really narrow one? No, that's but Bills is the little one, the little, really little narrow one, the one that's like nine meters wide. Oh yeah, I did a venue set one there. It's carnage. You put a bit oh. of bait in. Like ridiculous, it's dead shallow, but loads of fish. Yeah, you gotta like fish off your feed or push them stupidly up the bank. It's like that much water, things like that, haven't you? Yeah, dead light rigs and lay on. That was the best way I, I could catch it. I don't want to tell you anyway. I'm fishing we're against not, we're you, not on that that. We're not on that one, we're on the other one. We're just on butts that Bills is the other one, <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm. Would I say I'm with Jake? Oh, yeah, that was I remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You caught on the edges, didn't you? In the plat um, next to the pegs, didn't you? Somewhere? It was dobbing, it was in winter then, so we'll be right there now. But yeah, when it's like that chaos, just literally start again somewhere else. Simple as that's the answer. Here. Let them calm down, come off it. You want them to clear it out, and then you want one fish or two fish in your peg at a time. It means there's too many fish and too much bait in your peg. You've just got to leave it uh, unless you can poke them into a corner or put them really high up on the bank or something like that. But leaving it's normally the answer, isn't it? Yeah. Mad. No, I, don't, 
You are jailed. Uh, Lee Jackson, any of you guys fish Twin Lakes in Bedford? Got a match on Saturday? No, that Polly goes there. That's Polly's place where he goes, I think. <clears throat> where was that place he took you when you did a challenge against him? Oh, Peatling Pools. Oh, that Peatling. Was. Oh, was it? I thought that might have been there. No, no, no it, it's Bedford. It's Polly's world, isn't it? No, yeah. that's like Leicester way, isn't it? Peatling, yeah. That's by Sam Collett. Peatling is, yeah. Bedford's yeah. not. Yeah. Bedford's where you used to live, these shows, didn't it? Milton Keynes. Yeah. Uh, not Aaron's. What's that lady down there? Um, Alders. Alders, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So I speak to Polly. Yeah, speak to Polly. I don't even know anyone that goes here. Only Polly. Hmm? Don't know. Yeah, um, speak to Polly that one. Just don't message him after eight o'clock. He will be on the wine and you will just get <laughs> off the who knows what he'll be. <laughs> <laughs> wine, I love that. Yeah, red fun. wine and Baileys, isn't it? It's rosé, isn't it? Rosé likes the do. Oh, is it rosé? Yeah, rosé Polly likes. Brilliant. On, on the group. Um, Mark Dickinson, how do you change your shallow fishing at places like Marston Fields when you have a 10-inch float to hook limit? It's different there. I, I know what Mark's thinking, because he's thinking sort of the difference between F1 fishing at Isaac Walton and that. It's just different when it's carp. Carp are great. You can have a 10 inch limit and you can have a flipping six foot lash and still hook the bites because they keep hold of it. I mean, so you just need completely separate rigs for carp fishing that may be up to a full top kit length. And then F1 fishing, it's all about the shortest lash as possible most of the time in it. So yeah. two big separate lots of shallow kit for F1s and carp. So yeah, Marston's yeah. nice. Yeah. What's Marston? 10 inches. It's shallow in it, it's shallow, or 12, isn't it? 12 is the shallowest you can fish. Or 10 or 12. We should know. <laughs> and it's time for shallow there, yeah. But it's what he had at Bow Hill. Yeah. That's my two bait boxes, so I just fish two bait boxes deep anyway. It's all good. That's the best carp depth anyway. Mm-hmm. No. Um, Jeremy Belanger's watching from far. Well, you just Jeremy Beadle then. Mm-hmm. And I thought you were going to go Jeremy Beadle. Dan Williams, have you ever fished at Wigmore Fisheries in Shropshire? It's not far from Western. I've heard of that one, but no. I think I have. I think I've been there for any such of a big perch when they had the, the eclipse. I'm sure it was Wig, Wigmore. Yeah, sure it was, yeah. <laughs> Got loads of carp, but didn't catch any perch. Do you reckon a sure. solar eclipse would like make them feed weird or feed better if it randomly got dark? You'd have a random twenty-minute spell where it's solid. Maybe. Yeah, I don't remember it going solid, but it yeah, went dark. And the eclipse, you'll just be like, it's gone dark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gone a bit cloudy. <laughs> um, Mr. Lancey, hi guys. I regularly fish gold at. Partridge, I regularly use a waggler fishing from the car park pegs. I catch a few here and there, but never seem to get them going and feeding heavily. Help. Go on page 27. Do it on 27, innit? Yeah. That is I mean, the one. Any of them pegs where, where the lilies are by the car park, I mean, any peg on gold is phenomenal. Uh, just don't chuck it far out. Just literally just swing it from your rod so swing so for your hook from your, your hand to your rod and just swing it out that's all you need to fish on gold don't need to fish far out it's place is it it's not a pellet no. it, it used, used to be, be. There. used to be when the chub were in but you know you don't catch there's too many F1s there's a lot of carp and you just miss too many bites there's loads of big rod nudes in um, just like underarm it or yeah get on peg 27 as well that's a right peg yeah, yeah. You, you wanna, if you want to throw a waggler you need to chuck it to one of them islands Definitely, you get so many bites doing that. 27, Chuck and Stad Island, you will get a bite to Chuck off F1 to Carp. Yeah, I was going to say Old Bar as well. We've been a member of Gold, you'll be able to go on Hole Bar uh, when it's not as busy in the week, not as many carpers on there. Get on 40, is it 45, 46, round about there, and Chuck to the island, Chuck in the gap there if you want to fish a waggler for Carp. You'll catch him there. Definitely. Oh, in the wide bit. Well, the wide bit, 16, 17, isn't it? Yeah, you'll yeah. catch him there as well. If you, if you want to chuck one. Yep. Um, Philip Roberts. Wagglers, the pain in my behind. Fish could more arena last week. Could only catch on the deck. Is that normal? Nothing like the recent videos you guys have posted, including Preston. 
Don't fish a wag the wrong cud mourner, Ian. You just don't catch. Don't get a bite on it. You do, You don't. You don't, J-Lad. You don't. You catch, like, 15 more. Like, 15 to 1 if you took to Method or a bombing, though. Off his shallot. Don't catch on Wagner on Cudmore on Arena. Okay. Too you, shallow. You just do. But you don't, Jay lad. You wouldn't now. It's like, there's no depth in it. It's only like three foot down the middle. Is there no water? You catch on a mugging Waggler. You catch really well on that, but you don't catch. You just don't catch on a Waggler. No, you better throw in a method or a bomb. What, um, yeah. What's best for Mugging Waggler wise, what's your best advice? Long tail, four foot tail, and get have it fixed like J Lad sets you up. Amazing that Jay. Love it. Yeah. Perry Stone's waggles are the best ones if you want to oh, get out. How good are they? I've got some of them. He sent me some. What berry? So good, aren't they? Amazing. Mega them for mugging because you can interchange them in it. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Sorry. They'd be the wags. Mm-hmm. Um the shadow. I've got my fish show tickets. Looking forward to seeing you there. Um are you presenting it this year, Andy? No, because I'm going to qualify on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Me, yeah. 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 And then we're not we're not going to drink anything. Um, Paul Wilkinson, apart from just draw peg one four six, how would you attack winning a match on Kobe six this weekend? Oh, it is, isn't it? It's weird how that pegs are good. You said it's a big wee bed, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, where was he in Leeds? He was on one seven three. One out to another good peg, isn't it? One seven three. Yeah, he, uh, he won. He won that yesterday, didn't he? Yeah, it wasn't that good, was it? It was a little weight yesterday, a bit moody. Yeah, 106, wasn't it? Um, Kobe sticks, yeah, it's mainly carps in it. Carp on the mud line, uh, and then anything to cover, maggots or casters to cover for the F1s, where the reeds have been folded over or they fell in or something. Whether it's down your edge or across, just do that. Don't fish anything down the middle, I wouldn't. Uh, maybe something on a top kit, pellets or meat if you want, but you fish on the mud line and against the reeds on cover. Yeah. That'll be it. Tighten the mud in the edge if you've got it. Yeah. Mm, like that. There's carpy fishing on. That's my favourite Kobe, that. Mm. Is it? Did you see what I caught what we caught today in Kobe 3? It's random, isn't it? First time I've ever seen a chub in them Kobe's. Like ever. Yeah. I've never even heard of one of you. No, no. Must have caught the eye or something that must have when you bought some eyes. Must have done, mate, yeah. Was it eyed in with the eyed? Eyed in in the eyed <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Josh Lloyd, hi lads. Idea for a takeaway challenge. Five different takeaways are picked, McDonald's, Chinese, etc. And Andy and Jamie, can you choose one different item to use as bait from each takeaway? Can we eat the rest um, of them? Could you do it? Or could you do spin the wheel for... Could you do spin the wheel for the takeaway? We need to like deliver or something, sponsoring it. We can do it uh, from when you order it, and like your drivers have got a race. That's yeah, pretty good. your fishing time. We'll have a thing. Have a chat. What would you do? What What's the optimum takeaway for? For speed. What no, for I... for fishing bait wise. What would you want? You'd want. So you want like uh, I'm going to say a pizza, then you get all the toppings on it. You get a bit of sweet corn, a bit of ham, and a bit of sausage. I was thinking like a chicken and sweet corn soup from Subway. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, you just, I just want to eat it though. Yeah, no, you can do it. You've got that might work actually. That you spin your region or whatever it is, country, and then you've got to order. Oh, right, okay. That. But you can order what you want, so you can be technical, tactical. Do- to do like Italy, Germany, France, and what's the subway? What's it? Well, no, that's just Is that just, not what you're thinking? just subway, Chinese, Indian, um, yeah, Greek. Yeah. We're off. I want to press play. Yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Philip we'll King. Like that. Andrew's gone out of my one percent soon. <laughs> 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 Philip King, evening, Jamie. With your fishing makings recently, do their pellets prepare as per your video on the basics? Did what? Do, do, are you preparing your pellets at makings the same as a basics video? Um, like, yeah, they were. They were sound. I see. Perhaps some for a method do sound. They're all. Um, their micros are screttings. All right. Okay. Is it not mainline anymore, Jay? No. 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 They have their own fishery pellets now. 
Nice. So yes, they were they were sound. Like actually, I prepped loads of them. I prepped the bag and half for the method, and then because I did the fish method, I turned them into mushy micros down the eggs last a couple of hours. But they they were sound. They were good pellets. Then they were. No. But where the I had weird pellets. I had. I'm sure I had Coppins fours, and I'm sure I had Scretton sixes. I don't know if they had Coppins sixes. I didn't look, but I think they had a variety of everything. I think you can have whatever you want. I think. I don't know, but yeah, they were good. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chris Danby, evening chaps. How would you tackle uneven, featureless, steep margins? Can see the carp head down feeding, but can't catch them. That sounds like well, Marston's. Yeah, that is a good one. That. Uneven featured. They are. It's laughing, isn't it? Laughing, so you were light rigged work there, wasn't it? Yeah, often you bait at the back of your feed. Depends. Yeah. You want your pile and then you bait at the back of it in the direction that the fish are coming in. Yeah. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, we've done we've done something on that. Have a look at the video we did years ago at Larford. It was called Margin Fishing. What was it? Margin Masterclass at Larford, wasn't it, or something? It was unbelievable one. how that works, isn't it? Like ridiculous. It was just before the Golden Reel final, wasn't it? That you won yeah. that we filmed it. Yeah. Yeah. Would, Let's... Would, would you still do the same thing? Yeah, but I wouldn't feed the one at the back. I'd just feed my main pile, but then put my rig just past it with no bait. Much, much, much better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Patient. So I think I'm... Big ones, isn't it? Because you can see them. It makes you impatient. You've just got to be patient. Five an hour job done, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, don't know. I always find, like, you just waste time down the edge. Yeah. How many times do you come away from, like... Fishing down the edge, then thinking, oh, if I'd have just stopped on that short line or if I'd have just stopped out long, I'd have caught a lot more. Yeah, I did the makings on Thursday, exactly that. Just, if you're catching anywhere else in it, it's always the hardest one to catch them in them style of edges. Yeah. Shallow, featureless, because they just, there's nothing pinpointing them, is there? They're just, just not. It's mad, isn't it? However shallow you go, you, you're always <laughs> like, oh, they won't, won't go any shallower, but they always do. Yeah. They see, I think they can see you. They can physically see what you're doing. No, mate, I'm not eating that. No. I can't tell you. What are you on, hand? No, you, you were just randomly laughing. No, I just like enjoying the stories. I like a bit of Jamie speak. <laughs> <laughs> um, Darren Watson when fishing shallow what changes when fishing for F1s or carp hope them scissors come in handy oh he, he's one at, uh, oh the surgical, surgical one. one yeah 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 proper what changes when what fishing for carp or F1s yeah shallow mm -hmm. so it's last length and feeding isn't it carp longer lash uh, not feed as much more noise and slapping or you know sneaking your bait in F1s, more noise, flicking, real short lashes, over depth if you can, and accurate feeding. Get them in a column. is isn't it? Basically, yeah. Simple as that, isn't it? Short, short kits, short freeze as well for F1s if you can. Um, and longer kits for carps. Yeah, that's about it, isn't it? Mm. Cool. Um, Steve M M Oh, why do people have complicated surnames? McMurchy, I'm going with. Can what? you see... Big wobbly carp being phased out in favour of F1s and Ide. No, I think you need a mix. Definitely. Yeah. I think massively need a mix. For fishery management, I think F1s and Ide are a lot easier. But you've got to have both. I mean, I, I couldn't handle just one style of fishing. I love skipping between the two. Do you not think people are getting almost... There's people getting too good at F1 fishing that will eventually put people off by having too much of a... Yeah, it's got a lot less variety to it than carp fishing has, hasn't it? That's the thing for me. I mean, carp fishing is a million different methods. F1s can be a bit monotonous at times of the year when they just feed in certain ways wherever you go. Yeah. But yeah, no, I like a big wobbly one, in it? I like a big mm -hmm. wobbly one. Is that a nod to order a beer, Andrew? Try and be subtle. No, no I've still got I've some. <laughs> the boys, the boys just walk in and like, do you want a beer, Dad? No, I'm all right. <laughs> um, Martin Bell, do you ever get to your peg and see who's near and think this is like having an empty peg? Only when I was next to Belly up at, um, where is it, Forest Lane, then it was. 
<laughs> I you thought you were going to say every time you draw next to me, Jay. <laughs> yeah, you never do, do you? It just doesn't matter. Anyone no, can beat can't you. Do. Yeah, do that's it. The day, it? Like, one will beat you. There's definitely something though, drawing next. If you draw next to better anglers, it almost makes you fish better as well, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, mm. but, yeah I suppose if you go in being cocky and all that, it's always get going to backfire. Um, evening, lads. After your opinions on practicing for shallow fishing feeding correctly, would would you say go to Western pools and just practice until doing correctly? Hope this makes sense. Yeah. Like on about pleasure fishing type stuff. Even then, if you struggle with shallow fishing, yeah, that's what you do. You watch lots of videos and you go and you keep doing it. It's, it's, it's right, though, isn't it? There's only, there's only so much you can watch on uh, videos or reading magazines. You've got to be out there doing it, experiencing it, because obviously conditions change. Uh, and obviously, you're dealing with wild animals. So you've got to be out there doing it, definitely. Definitely. Shallow fishing is one of them you do need to practice to get right in it. Yeah. <laughs> Holding your boat, holding your rig tight, massive learning how to do that because that's flipping hard. Yeah, start Hold feeding, getting that feeding tight. right, well, isn't it? Everything, them aspects there. Ah, oh, I got cramp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on, go on. I thought um, Milo would be. <laughs> what, mate? I thought Milo would add you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it smells that um, good. Fish with Bish, will you seriously have another go at fly fishing? Best video ever. It summed up the joy of fishing, the look on Andy's face. Yes. 100%. I absolutely loved it. I want to I take the boy, you know what I mean? And it's just it's getting time, isn't it? But, yeah, so good. I definitely want to do that river fishing, that little yeah, stream and dry fly and all that. We were just talking about it, weren't we? Just, like, mm. literally before we went live, so we need to do a proper trouty, grailingy one or something. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Loved it. Um, George, hi, lads. Quick question. How do you approach undercut margins when you want to fish tight in? P.S. Ask Andy if he saved any cake for Jamie. Oh, right. Oh, oh, oh right. right. Go ahead, George. Go on, mate. Uh, <laughs> no. Sorry, Jay, lad. Sorry, Richard. It all went on the way back, that. That was amazing. Lemon drizzle as well, Jay, lad. Oh, it was so tasty. The kids didn't even get any. Literally had it all on the way back. What's that from coaching? Yeah. Why was it the same fella from Lindholm? No, no, not that cake. No, we we get lots of stuff now, don't we? we get lots of provisions. No, completely different, lad. No, I caught okay. yours about two weeks ago, Kobe two. Mm. Undercut margins, dear lad. What would you do? Dig them out. Um, don't know. It's, it's one of the things. You just have to feed so carefully, don't you? When it's like depends on the cut they are as well. But um, back the aggro in it. Simple as I wouldn't treat them any different, would you? It depends on the depth more than anything. I thought, I thought you're right, George. Just be shallow, mate. It just fixes everything. Just be shallow. Yeah, I think it was on about like the coves, you know, like some of the pegs there, obviously, they're really undercut, aren't they? Yeah, and avoid them. I'd, I'd try and find somewhere that wasn't, get around the now, poke it, and find that somewhere that isn't. That's the one, isn't it? It's like you said loads of times, I went, yeah, don't fish the swims where people have fished. Go past it. That's massive, that. That's massive. Cool, isn't it? Partridge, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't fish in the obvious place because that is undercut. No. Yeah. Um, Joe Farley, I drew two on extension for the Youth National and managed £81, but only really caught Caster's Shallow. Struggle mm. to make the... Edge and short on maggots work. What would you have done differently? Not, it's not the best there on two because it's mega silty and it's dead deep, and they are they're the worst edges on the lake because you don't have any cover there as well. So it's a tricky one. You've almost it, it's not been the best area at all this year. The masters, it was rubbish. You've just drawn a bit of a bad one. If anything, you've done well to catch eighty pound there, and you have just got to lift some fish, cast the shallow against their weed beds across all day. Maybe fish further down your peg a bit towards peg one. Fish with some carp across as well, some carp live in that area. But uh, until it gets the fish want to be on the bottom in deep water, you're not going to catch it. They're just they're not feeding in that way. And you're never going to catch your maggot short like that because they're not eating in that way. That's why I caught nothing all through the flipping masters because nothing's on the bottom. But it is, that's what they're doing. You, you've drawn one of the worst series of lakes, simple as. Mm -hmm. 
unfortunately. Mm. Um, Charlie Law's getting ridiculous as well, isn't he? Unbelievable. He, he should get like two draws in the final. Oh, he should get two pegs. Yeah. You'd want to draw next to yourself, wouldn't you? Would you? You got your spare peg, yeah. The pleasure fishing. Of course you would, isn't it? Yeah, right then. Would it make that much difference there, do you reckon? No. Like, you'd probably have got too many fish in your peg if you had four empty pegs, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fair play. Well, that, um, that from our default is the youngest ever fish show angler, though, isn't it? It's 14, the kid that's got through. Yeah. He's been going up uh, Marston's. That's yeah. him, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, you met, met him on, on Thursday. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Must have been, must have been your advisor, helped him, Andrew. Well, I, I did happen to say just fill it in and fish shallow. <laughs> I think that's what he's done, to be fair. Yeah. Well, so, you know. He's free to now and just fish shallow, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, Matthew Ward, why do feeder anglers refer to distance in metres but depth in feet? Pole anglers refer to distance in metres but depth in feet. What? I, just fishing, in it? We're all weird. It's the most messed up for, like, you said pounds, this kilos, yeah. Yeah. centimetres, feet. Imperial metric, yeah, it's just messed up. Isn't it? Efficiently, <laughs> like, great anything like that, doesn't it? With measurements and weights. Yeah, like... E even distances. But it makes sense to you, doesn't it? You'll fish, like, a yeah. six-foot rig at 16 metres. It yeah. makes sense. And then a 16-inch hook length. Yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> I've yeah. had a pint of maggots yeah. and a kilo of ground bait. In flipping, isn't it? <laughs> different because of your face, even. So like that. Broken. There's no answer to that, is there? We're just all oh. mom. Or a two pound carp on a one gram rig. Yeah. It is, isn't it? <laughs> it's just <laughs> totally wrong. Um, it even floats, isn't it? We can't even decide on how to. No, point a gram or four fourteens or. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We can't not. decide on anything as anglers, can we? No. Um, right, controversial. Andrew Pearson, hi lads, what's your thoughts on £840 in five hours at Tobba? Yeah, a bit lively. A bit lively, isn't it? It's not, they're look. What's the way? The fish care and all that, it's £50 in the net and they're doing it, so crack on, yeah. nothing wrong with all of that bit. And they're in good nick, aren't they? I've talked to Des and Callum, uh, wanted to see him last week about it, and the fish are like all immaculate, hard yeah. fighting, so they get looked after. The place um, is beautiful as well, isn't it? From everything that yeah, you see, yeah. just like grass and everything, isn't it? It is immaculate. Yeah, but so it's specialised. Yes, there is definitely a skill to it, but a fat kid's that one, is it? Well, I think the problem you got, we were, we were chatting, <laughs> we was on about it, Westwood, and it's not, not normal people can't go and do it because you've not got fifteen nets, you've not got kits with brown hydro and stuff like that, so. It's almost gone, regardless of everything else involved, it's gone that far. It's You have to spend a bloody grand on keep nets before you... <laughs> Just before you go. But it's yeah. unique to that venue. To, I dare say everyone, or most, whether they say it or not, I'd like to have a little go just once. I'd I mean, like to have a go. I'm not going to have a go because it's seven days away. I'd yeah. love to have gone and tried it, but I wouldn't want to do that every week now. But there's nothing wrong with it. It's just fishing no. that's looked after, which they are. Do you know I mean I saw lots of the natural anglers kicking off and all of that, but they're putting fifty pound in a net. Do you know what I mean I've seen a lot worse people putting thirty and forty pound of ropes that big in a flipping canal net, or hundred and fifty pound of chub in a keep net. It is, isn't it? And all that sort of stuff. These are looked after better than any other fish are. But yeah, yeah, yeah. They not, are. not for me. They are like hundred and fifty pound in it. No, yeah. you just say like a one-off. You should go like cobbles once a year. And just like blow the cobwebs off, and it was amazing. You know what I mean? Three, four, five hundred pounds. Yeah, uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't do it all the time. But yeah, it's one hour. Amazing. Just go and catch fish. <laughs> yeah. Um, Paul Wilkinson. Hi all. Congrats on the fish show final. Uh, just got the X twenty pole. Can I ask Andy if it's normal for the F one and match top kits to be different length to the carp kits, as it states they're all two point four meters, but not. The F1 and the match... What, you mean the F1 shallow kits, he's saying? Because the one F1... One match kit. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, they should all be the same. The match kit's the one that's not drilled at the bottom. You've got to do that yourself. Um, and the carp and the 
F1, the car from the F1 kit. Yeah, they should all be the same. They should all be the same, then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Have a word with the shop. Mm. Um, how, how far out do you extend your foot plate on your box? All the way. Full amount. Oh, it depends on the peg, doesn't it? But in our world, you very rarely don't have the room in it. Till it, till it clicks is my answer with the Matrix one. You just got like, two holes on the Preston one. You can have it a maximum and a minimum one. I always do it to the maximum one. Yeah. Yeah, you want room, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh... That'll be your leg, though. <laughs> <laughs> you've got your legs. You've got your little one. It looks a baby legs like and feet. <laughs> Are you still using that silly side foot play hand? Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. When your fist is like that way, the wrong way, you know what I mean? It's amazing. It is what good. If, what if you want to fish the way that your side tray is? Yeah, that's a normal way, though, wouldn't it, for being right-handed? Yeah. Then you can't put your feet anywhere. You don't need to, because you're fishing the normal way. You have to it's take like when you're that way, you're pulling this arm, you've got to swivel around, haven't you? Can you, you fish need... the other way, Jay? Can you fish left, like left-handed down that edge? I get pins I'm... and needles when I try it. Yeah, I don't like fishing left-handed. No. Oh. What, where you strike and then do that weird thing where they like swap the Big ball over yeah. there? Yeah, no. I like that. Mm. Um, fish with Bish. Question for Rich. When filming these two, is it difficult to film the catches when the floats go at the same time? And how many cameras do you have to use? Um, yeah, you just have, I think six. Just, you just keep your uh, camera on Jamie, basically, didn't you? Because he's gone yeah. under. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it you could. You've got enough cameras that, like, six, I think, is about the record, but you've got most angles covered, and then there's one or two that needs to be moving. But, yeah, you miss some bits, but you can generally gloss over it, editing it and all, switching to different angles and stuff like that. It would be easier with another person filming, but, yeah, the last one disappeared. Yes, the last one. Just disappeared. Do you reckon I scared him off? Was it my fault? Yeah, reckon so. Yeah, Um, Jordan Lee, where do you fancy Qualifier Lake coming from on Lindholm on Wednesday? Bonsai. Okay. Okay. Actually, I've spoke to Bagger today and he reckons Bonsai's a shout, you know, apparently now. But yeah. yeah Bonsai bonsai. Local. I don't know the lakes. You'll have to tell I don't know the lakes proper, Jay. You, you want to win. But it depends what Alan puts in because he, he might not use them all with it only being 120. Yeah. It depends what he puts in, but if it's everything... It'll be the winner will come off Bonsai Loco or Benny's. One of them will produce the winner. I'd be amazed if it doesn't, unless he doesn't use those lakes. So I've not seen Aaron's schedule for next week. What, what lakes are on what? Do you know? Do you know what I'm going to take with me? What rat jig? Rat jig? <laughs> rat jig? <laughs> I reckon that breaks every rule of that rig. Every <laughs> single rule it breaks. What no, rules does it break? It sink, though, does it? Um, it far from sinks. It'd be yeah, never. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah. You qualify on that, I'll retire. Okay, promise. <laughs> you're, you're sitting with me if I qualify on that. Whether you qualified or not, you're sitting with me. <laughs> You've got to fish it in final as well, though. Oh, yes. It'd be even better on there. <laughs> oh, the, the, these are yet to see the glory of the rat jig. Oh, it all yeah, makes sense. Get yeah, ready. Uh, Curtis, hi lads, hope you're well. I know you're both not sponsored by MAP anymore, but I was wondering, would a 10.01 or 3G be a good good choice for places like the Glebe, Makins and Tunnel? I'd get a 9.01. I'd get a 9.01. It's a great poll, um, but yeah, go down the 9.01 route. Do you know what was really good was the 10.01 top kits on the 9.01. It was superb, because the top kits were a lot shorter, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Or even an 8.01, you know what I mean, for the likes of the Glebe, you know what I mean? Good balls, really good balls. Yeah. Um, have any of you fished a Longford fishery near Derby? If so, what are your thoughts on the waters? You have. I, I reckon I could probably cast to it from here, nearly. Oh, really? Right by it, yeah. Is that where you are now? Five. I reckon I could wake up at like 10 to 9 and be there for the draw at 9. Could you? That's oh, yeah. no. Is it? Is it thing his brother from Birch House or is it some like yeah. family relation? Yeah, I think brother or cousin or some like the farmers who own it are related. Right. Or, but yeah, it's it's good. There's loads of water, but it's like your typical. It almost feels like an old club water where everything's quite all, all the islands are quite overgrown and stuff like that. So it makes it tricky from a match fishing side of things. But 
I think the sil mm -hmm. silvers are many people, but they have a silvers um, open through the winter that seems to be all right. That um, what's his name's been going to from Cam. Nathan Cam. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it seems all right. like I've literally fished it once, I think, on a match and one. Um, Go on, Miss Yard. Silvers. But, no, that was a carpy one. Well, but you, you, yeah, don't go if you want money because I think the opens there, you, I think I won about 30 quid for winning a 30 pegger. It's not yeah. the best payout. <laughs> nice. Um, so, yeah, worth a go. Uh, Mike Dean. Hi, Jay, Andy, and Rich. I buy the Preston pre tied hook lengths. Some of the bands yeah, seem boy. to be a long way away from the hook. Any suggestions on how to get them closer other than hooking the back? Yeah, they are bloody long hairs on that. The, the band, just twist it around the hook. That's all I do. Brilliant. Don't let it bother you. Honestly, don't let it bother you. So the the, the bigger ones, the uh, the eyed hook, uh, the KKMs, KK80s with the sort of like clearish bands, they tend to be a bit longer. The GPM bead, they're a lot shorter with the smaller bands on. But all you've got to do is wrap it once or twice around your hook, especially with the bigger hooks. Nothing wrong with it at all. Don't look at Jamie. Honestly, <laughs> look into my I'm eyes. Don't look around, look into my face. There's nothing wrong with them. They're amazing. I'm a fan yeah. of pre-tied hook lengths. I love pre-tied. I wouldn't use them. I wouldn't use them. I love them. They're bad. They're not <laughs> bad. They're amazing. <laughs> by, by the guru. There you go. <laughs> like the ones with the white bands are the. I, I wouldn't even use them. I refused. I brought them, looked at them, and refused to play them. Out. Yeah, they, are pretty, they, are good. they are good. <laughs> Honestly, they're good. Honestly. Oh, yeah, yeah, like the face. <laughs> well, I'm for. Would I lie to yeah. you? I would not ah. lie to you two. I do. I do use them. They're amazing. Um, like, you don't stretch much at first, but once you've been inside a pellet, you can get like two pellets in them. Amazing. Hmm. Ask everyone on the group coaching day what I use. Go on. Um, Ma no, Martin Bell. Oh, Rich, have you have you been to the Turks today? Have, have you got makeup artists before you come on camera? Lol. Now I just had to shave, so I look a bit less of a pikey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Chris Defus Slater, what do you think about Paul Holland leaving Guru? We've literally just seen this this second. Yeah, I've not even seen it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think he's done that just for to say there is much focus, any and whatever way he's planning on going. There's no ties of sponsorship. They lead to a whole range of other opportunities, don't they? Yeah, a great idea. <laughs> um, Mark yeah. XL, daft question. Do you and any of you have superstitions? I feel like I'm a little bit superstitious. I never want to like piss the thing. I'll never jump in a queue, things like that. Would you? Like in the in the draw queue, I'd never jump in. No, yeah, where you are, aren't you? You are where you are, or you what, get a bad What about that. sort of drawing hands? Do you ever change drawing hands, or are you always with the same one? No, I've, I've rubbed my key ring, was so funny. I got a little oh, bit yeah, of so yeah. give that a rub, and then I draw a flyer most of the time. Mm, don't know. Rituals rather than superstition in it, but yeah, I am a little bit, definitely. I believe you never want to piss the fishing gods off. And it, what's meant to be, meant to be. Like tickets, we have this conversation with tickets, haven't we? Like I often want to send tickets back and swap them for different matches. Like I had, I had Moreland's fish show that I qualified at, and I wanted to send it back. I wanted to go to the Oaks instead because I'd had a right. bad week. But I've got a dead good day's fishing at the Oaks. Yeah, was it? no, it wasn't. It was Tolerton for fish I'll... north. Fish north, yeah, yeah. And I thought, no, don't piss the fishing gods off, and then it goes good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know what I've done then. <laughs> 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 um, David Calburn I just wanted to say that the campaign was the best instructional videos I've ever seen I appreciate the effort you all put into that thank you, where do I sign up for the 10 grand a year package you put a lot of effort into that Andrew can I I'll, I'll tell you hooks Jay <laughs> <laughs> 10 grand a year you can come and sit behind me every batch if you want well, yeah. I thought you would not have me sat behind you. I would oh, have you. Behind... I'm David, not you. All right, I'm good. I'd be out with you 1% before you even sat down behind you. I'd yeah, be you out. I'd be done. You wouldn't make it to the all-in, would you? Definitely no. wouldn't make it to the all-in. No. Yeah. Have you ever bank run for anyone, Andrew? Yeah, my dad. 
in when did he qualify? Two thousand and six, two thousand no, two, when did yeah, yeah, or yeah. Cross, uh, Hayfield when, on when Mark Jones won it? Two thousand. That what it was when it was rubbish. Yeah, yeah he had seventeen kilo. Yeah, it's when Lee Thornton qualified when he uh, was joined with Jeff Moores. Yeah, years Lee, ago. Funny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. neck, yeah. Um, Steve Higgins, sorry, late in arriving, sorting kit out for a match over here, and it's bloody hot in Spain. I do have a question about floating poles. Yes or no? Mm, no, not for me. Mm. <laughs> Back in the day, it was pretty good actually. I did quite, I did quite like it. Because we didn't understand about shallow fishing. No, I think we'd have understood shallow fishing more. We'd have set like so many records back then, wouldn't we? Been ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, no. But no, not now. Not now. Yeah. Poles are different now. Anyway, poles are too stiff now. I don't yeah. think you get away with it. You know what I mean? No, you need to move your rig as well, though, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, appar apparently in Netherlands, it, there's a pre-qualifier before the qualifier for fish show as well. Ah, uh, is that what it is? There's something that goes on. I've never looked into that, but... Yeah. All right, okay. Um, Alan Clark, do you still fish Lingmere, Jamie? No, I haven't fished Steve's place for... I just don't have time. I don't fish open matches. Like, these days, I don't fish open matches. If I do, I might go mess car. But no, I, I never get a chance to fish that style of match anymore, unfortunately. Um, Miss... Where are we? Martin Barlett. Hi, lads. Just a quick question, if possible. How many shots and what size for a 0.3 of a gram float? Yeah, it depends which 0.3 of the gram float you're using. Um, no, point it's like five number nines, isn't it? No. Uh, yeah. Three. Yeah. A little bit lighter, isn't it? Yeah, ish. It's around that, isn't it? But as you say, they're all going to be different, aren't they? Yeah, 414s is normally five or six number nines, isn't it? Eight, isn't it? Five, five number eight, four, 14s. Oh, yeah, my brain's in. I don't know. It all depends on what flow. That's another it thing. Is. It does that depend on what flow, yeah. They actually have to take it. They print it on it, but that doesn't mean they have to take it. I could use... I'm looking at five different floats now that are point three, and they'll all take something different. Yeah, that's right. In it, whatever it takes. Best, but, best thing is, is to stick to a certain pattern in it and then just like get used to what they take, definitely. Yeah, learn how to use it. Mm. Let me just grab a bottle of water. Run out of water. Great. Um, other, we'll do that for you. Steve McMurchy again. Other than the UK, where would you like to fish and what for? I think we've had this. Oh, yes. I'd love to go on the Fraser River in Canada for sturgeon. It's like my dream. I, I definitely want to do that. Um, Tarpon in Florida, I'd love to do that as well. Um, I'd love to go and catch great big cubs in Norway as well in the fjords, but I ain't got sea legs. You know what I mean? That would like right up my street. Or is it the halibut as well they get over there, Rich? Yeah, they get, everything's just massive, isn't it? There? You know, because it never goes dark, does it? It stays light all the time if you go at the right time of year. I'd love to do that. But this the sturgeon fishing for me is definitely the one. What about you, Richard? I think either Nile perch or peacock bass. Ah, yeah, Nile one perch. Those. That's the one. But I think, yeah, Nile perch is one of those that I think it's not realistic now. I think they're like wiped out in loads of places. Really? What is it like? Well, not like NASA, was it? Where was the one that John Wilson went? No. Oh, yeah, like the biggest inland water or something in the world, isn't it? But, it looked amazing. Yeah. You could see him, couldn't you? Like coming in for his bait off the rocks and that. Where is Talking it? about where, where would you, what favourite, what would you like to go and do, Jay? Fish, go to fish, where? I want to go bone fish fishing in Florida. Nay, I said, no, I'd love to do that, but I can't fly fish. That's the right one, that. I'll do that one. Yeah. I don't um, just go around and do all three. Can we do like a come dine with me, but like a fishing holiday instead of a meal? Amazing. As long as it doesn't involve boats, I'm on. A, I'm on. Um, Anthony Rouse, hi all. What setup would you use for casting to the island at Hayfield Lakes? Um, island. 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 Yeah. Depends. Depends what the weather was like. Not on the fifties. I'd throw a normal method because it's a nice chuck there. It's a nice sensible chuck. What eleven foot rod, Jay? Uh, eleven foot rod 
Yeah, yeah, lamb foot rod definitely can't do it. Oh, tens hard work. You need a pokey proper rod. I'd throw a meth feeder there, 30 gram meth feeder on them ones from 49 to 52. I'd do the same on the little chuck on uh, 20, 20. 21. Yeah. And on the big chuck, I'd throw a hybrid instead or a, one of our open alloy feeders, the big ones, the 32 or a 45 gram in them, just to protect your bait more because it's a big half chuck that. Would you reach out with 11 foot or do you need a 12 foot there, Jay? Yeah, I'd put a 12 on just to make it comfy. Yeah, for a feeder rod as well with a shocky and uh, with the wind. Look, it can be a decent chuck that on 22, 23, 24, 22, 20. I can't remember, but yeah, that big chuck, I throw hybrid instead. Um... Where are we? Richard Fry, hello all. I was with you on Thursday and I've just signed up to the All Access. Loving it. Keep up the good work. Thank um, you very much. Little me 10023438. Great username. Fished a match on Little Owls at Woodlands yesterday. Got, oh. snapped up, got snapped up in the margin. Then my peg just went dead afterwards. What would you do in this situation? Then now. That's the one somewhere I, else, isn't it? And then you've seen it, Little Owls. The, have, you, have you never seen him? The one over the back in it somewhere. Yeah, lovely little lakes here. A bit, bit clearer than the other lakes, but like full of fish still. I've never even seen them. Yeah, lovely. But I think it just is a general rule, not just on there. If it goes quiet on one, you prime it again, feed it, and just go somewhere else. Just wait for him to rock up again. Simply yeah. that. A bit of rotation. Mm. Um, why, why is it never the same when you smash a rig up, though? And like, it's not, you is it? Read it? Yeah. Mm, Did yeah. it at the weekend and... Just you can do like same. duplicates, can't you? Like, think it's the same, but it never sits right. It's never quite the same, is it? Yeah, I like that. It's not. Um, yeah, another one. Like, I don't, it went, I don't like your elastic connection, and why? Talk me through it. Was add it just where you do it on the elastic and like hooked a decent carbon, it's just sheared through the elastic again. I reckon you're new. putting it on the wrong side of the elastic. You're not putting no, it it's, out. No, no right. it's actually cut through. It's cut through the elastic. Not cut through. Richard, Richard, Richard. I've used it for 30 years. I've never ever had it cut through. I am Bob. Richard. <laughs> <laughs> um still hate hybrid. No, I'm getting <laughs> getting used to it. Sorry. Um Stuart Bridges just got some matrix cube shot today. Um, and I have to say they look quite nice and we'll try them at the weekend. I haven't got mine. How's that work? <laughs> <laughs> but they have. I, I've got all my shot. All my shot arrived. I didn't get any flipping cube on today. I probably didn't order them, to be fair, but I thought I did. <laughs> yeah. um, Anthony Rouse. Hi again. Andy, what reel and line would you use with a Preston onesie rods? Cheers. Are they them a little the short? Like eight foot? Oh, friendly. right, okay. Go for like um, 3,000 size reel. Um, and what else? What line? Uh, yeah. Six pound minimum up to eight pound. If you took in like a, a ledger bomb, it doesn't really matter. Probably go for eight pound, something like that. Some bit of backbone behind it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, apparently Polly did do a Twin Lakes live match. Uh, I think it's just come on. I think it just came out. I'm sure that was Twin Lakes. Um, Paul Hudson, do you, uh, do you lads still do your one-on-one -on -one coaching or is it just the group days? Andy does one-on-one -on -one still, doesn't he? I still, I still do, yeah, but uh, very limited on days, so the group days are where it starts to get on them. Yeah, that's that's worth plugging as well. We've got a few... Um... Uh, yeah, so we've got a few places left, haven't we, still, for Western on the 29th of July this month, the 29th. The 29th. Last Thursday of the month, whatever Last it is. Last Thursday of the month. Uh, Western, if you've not been before, fantastic place. Got a bar on site. That's all you need to know. <laughs> no, but so, yeah, there's obviously me, there's Adam Richards, um, is it Dez and Mikey? Yep. Or Mikey. Yep. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? Uh, yep. So all, all recovering something different. And the beauty of um, Western is there's lots and lots that we can cover, so it'd be, it'd be great. It's not like normal commercials, is it? That's, I'm really looking forward to that one. Yeah, do have yeah. So yeah, so yeah, have a look. Winningways.shop.com.co.uk. Um do, 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 where are we? Joe Farley, when shall I fishing for F1s on fixed rigs? Do you like your back shot bulk together or spread out? I only have to fish one back shot, mate. Normally just one number eight. I'm gonna yeah, I'm in your gang for shallow fishing like that. Only yeah. one. It'd, it'd take yeah. maybe two if it's a bit of wind. It depends how long your lash is as well. Yeah. 
the last maybe two, but yeah, one for me. And always, I want it to annoy me. It depends on oh, if you're Linda, you can't even use one. But as you long know, as you break it, I want to hold it so I've got to physically hold it so the rig doesn't go under. So that's the only time you put a back shot closer to your float than yeah. Like when you're on deck, you put it halfway. Charlie, you want it like three, four inches away, so you're physically holding it. Yeah, like that, Jay. Yeah. Mm. Are you not allowed back shots at Lindon? No, no back shots at Lindon. That that's where Christian was on about the Preston. A large stop. Oh, the stop thing. All oh, right, okay, right. Just, just jigger. Just jigger. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Solo go. Fish jigger. That's what you're doing. Jay lad, Jay lad, rat jig, rat jig. <laughs> <laughs> Is it still on your top kit? Oh yeah. Um, Andrew Thornton. Do- uh, Domino's stuffed crust meaty pizza with sweet corn as an extra topping. Oh, that'll be Ooh. takeaway baits. Yeah, always. none of that's baked. None of that's yeah. made. We just nail it, won't we? We just eat it with nothing left. I've got nothing left. <laughs> uh, Steve McMurchie, fishing challenge, start to finish fish left-handed. We did it. That was like one of our first, first ever challenges, wasn't it? Indoors. Two left-handed ones, aren't we? Indoors one and an outdoors one. Yeah, we did one as well when Ollie was with oh, yeah. us. Yeah. It was very hot. You nearly died that day. I was like oh, 40. So warm. So hot that day. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's when Ollie had his first uh, go at shellfish in the car. He loved it, didn't he? Flop it. Oh, in the uh, background of one of the podcasts, wasn't it? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, fair play. Um, Ale- uh, Ashley Sharma, how long had you guys been fishing until you won your first match? Um, probably 10 years. First open match. To, uh, no club matches. Don't know. Don't know. I mean, we started fishing like started right. different. I know I started well young, so is that starting fishing or starting match fishing? I don't know. I won my first match when I was fifteen, it'll be a club match when I was fourteen or fifteen. That'll be my first ever one. And my first open I won when I was seventeen. Yeah, seventeen, my first open match at Cudmore. And uh, not Cudmore at Burton Mere. Go on, Jay, lad. My first ever open match I won. Mm. Go on. So, what was the first open? Or just on the River Dane or somewhere? Or one of them? No. Um, so, first junior match when I was six, Holtz Pool. I've been, I've been through this loads of times with you. Yeah. Uh, club match was when I was eight at Sparrow Grove. And my first open match was when I was 12 on the River Weaver and that big end with Kevin Ashley there. And if I talked about that with eels, I was like, oh, I've got an eel! Did the memory on that? We put it on the other day, didn't you? That one, Rich. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right. Back in day. Back in um, day. Ryan Forrest, Jamie. When are the new pole floats that? Oh, what are the new pole floats that Matrix have brought out? And do you still use Timmy Moore's floats? No, I've, I've genuinely worked on them here already. I'm on Matrix ones for all my carp fishing because I've only been fishing dibbers and muddies and little diamonds. I've been using them. I mean, I have to. It's my job. Do you know what I mean? I have to smash the brains out so they hopefully don't break too much. And they've been brilliant. Yeah, they've been all right. And I'm, I'm loving the diamond ones. I used them on our... I used all Matrix ones on our live match the other day, didn't I? At Westwood? Yeah. Westwood! Westwood! Yeah. So, honestly. like, what are they like muddies then? Or are they a little bit finer bristle and that? No, no, same as with the muddies. But he's done me a diamond one. Do you know, like, I liked... They were me oh. and goldies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Them on them for me as well. Very, very oh, nice. Very nice. So, yeah. Uh, I think should... I've not actually got the whole flipping range yet. I'm using samples still because all the shops have nailed them and I couldn't get everything. <laughs> up. I've got quite a lot, but I've not got everything yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Philip King, at Makings Phase 3 soon, so if it's a similar weather, is it going to be a mugging match and what bait did you use? Yeah, I used little white pasty pellets. They were the best by far, but I feed four mils. I'd slap in it at 30 metres and then mug them when you can see them. That's on seven. If you're on Avon, Avon, Ave, Avon. Avon? Hello, Avon. Avon. Hello, everyone. <laughs> if you're on that one, I think you need to fish different. I think it's like a method feeder and then casters for skimmers on that one. I think Avon's little fish, like lots of skimmers and little stockies, whereas seven was big fish. I don't even know what the other legs are called, so I couldn't tell you about them. There um, was... Tem, Tem, Derwent, Dane, and um, 
Mersey. Yeah, not bad. Is there still are, is there no islands in any of them now, Jay? No, they've all, all yeah. the islands have been taken out. There's big islands, but they're not snake lakes anymore. They're big lakes now. Oh, right, okay. He might, he might have merged something, has he? Has he merged some or? Merged, I don't know. I, I didn't even walk no. down. Oh, I didn't know. Right. You had. Sean Moss. Hi, lads. When fishing with a short kit and a short four to stiffen your pole at 14 metres, surely it would be the same as 30 metres. Yeah, it is, of course it is. You lose yeah. a metre, don't you, with that with a short kit and a short four. Yeah, half a metre on each. Yeah, yeah definitely. But would it still be stiffer with the if you stick the mini extension or whatever for the extra metre to get to the equivalent length, would it still be stiffer? It's, it's all the other bits, isn't it? And making your elastic work the way it does with shallow kits and all that sort of stuff, isn't it? Just, again, personal. I don't do it, do I? I don't like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mick Russell, how good was Mikey on Thursday at Marston? Learned loads from him and, strangely, Andy on the Bob and Wagler. <laughs> yeah. You Ed. Um, Mikey's amazing when he loved it, didn't he? Bless him. Yeah, proper. Nice to have him there. Done that. Uh, oh, yeah, we need to get through these. Jeff Hardy, right. please, fast. please, 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 please don't get too greedy. I think your pricing is about right, but do we have to watch all the adverts when watching the videos? There shouldn't be adverts on the members' videos. Um, yeah. So if there is, let me know and I can double check it. Um, yeah, price wise, we've not increased the prices since we started. And no. Everyone else has, including Netflix and all the other fishing ones. So, um, yeah, but they shouldn't be. And um, we are, there might be a feature coming at some point where you can bypass it as a member, but that's potentially in the future. But it's more complicated than you think. Um, a fishing and festival at Lindome in a few weeks, fairly new to festivals. Any advice? I think we're on Willows, Bonsai, Bennies, and Loco. Willow, Bonsai, Bennies, and Loco. Ben Loco, but it's fish shallow every day. Well, they won't be allowed casters, will they, Jay? So it'll all be pellets, will it? Oh, yeah, no, they will be. Oh, wait. Oh. Yeah, and all it's... festivals and big matches, isn't it? You're allowed casters, is that right? It depends what festival. Check if casters allowed. If casters allowed, great. If not, maggots or pellets. Yeah. If casters allowed, fish them. If not, maggots or pellets are sound. Maggots are probably better. But just fish shallow on all them lakes. Just fish shallow. Simple as it. Shallow, all that. All jigger rigs, yeah, yeah. Everything, whatever you need, fixed rigs, jigger rigs, up and down in one line, 11 to 30 metres, just for shallow. An edge, maybe last hour, but it will be shallow fishing. That's what Lindo makes these days. The F1 capital of the world. Go on, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. um, I've been catching big weights of Bream at Hayfield, over £100 on the Opens. Do you reckon Bream could win the Maver this year? Yeah. Go on, you lad. Talk about this one. Go. We're not chatting about this. Go. Hey, oh, come on. <laughs> Bream and Perch. Yeah. No, what, right. Bobby? <laughs> um, Joe Farley, how much shot do your mugging dibbers take, Jamie? Yeah. Depends which ones. Depends which ones. If I want to fish um, me lighter one, which is number two, or a deeper, well, I can't be honest, getting them. Uh, the lighter one takes three number tens, the heavier one takes two number nines and number ten. Yeah, and it depends on the plop of the float. Yeah, the heavier one, if it's a bit windy, likes one, if it's not. But subtle, subtle is everything for not making noise and not spoofing them. Um, to, uh, Tony, will anyone be fishing August Festival at Heronbrook, 22nd to the 25th of August? No, can't do August. School holidays, in it? How is it? Yeah. And when targeting fish on snake lakes down the far shelf, is there a go-to bait you prefer for F1s and carps? Well, that's me, in it? Every day I'd pellet to me on far banks. It's, it, there's one of two. In fact, there's one of three. There's either mudline fishing if it's dead shallow with ground bait and maggots or whatever. There's caster shallow if you've got depth or there's odd pellets. One of them three is always the way to go. I mean, in the summer, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Simon Devney. Richard, can we have a whip round to get you on a sunbed? No, I'll burn. Um, <laughs> Ian Cartledge, hi guys. If you were not backed by the com um, by the companies you are with, which ones would you choose? Many thanks for all the laughs. I like to be able to use a bit of everything, anything I want that is perfect, right? Money, no object, and you could just pick and choose whatever you wanted of everything. I'd love that. But it's our job, so that's never enough. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. um, mm. Mark Taylor hi lads hope you're all okay that was a very corporate answer um, which match angler who isn't fishing anymore do you miss the most oh who you don't see no more that fishes oh I mean think about that one because there's loads isn't there it's people you yeah. don't see anymore isn't it Major yeah, yeah. Look yeah. with Neil didn't Neil was always a good laugh didn't he pop up on a random partridge match? Not yeah, like he ran right comes out of hibernation like once or twice a year. He was always like a deck of inspiration in my younger days, Neil. And... He normally just rocks up and wins as well, doesn't he? Yeah, don't muck about. Yeah. But there's loads in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Loads and loads. Um, Mike. Uh, Mike Dean, thanks for the previous advice. I did a four-day fishing holiday with mates. Preston Hybrid, 11, 13, and 15 need, needed changing after a day. Any suggestions on quality elastics? It depends how much you're catching, isn't it? We have spoke about elastics loads. Depends what you're catching. I've had an elastic last me a second before, and there's nothing to do with the elastic. It's just because of the condition. How much pressure you're putting on it, isn't it? Yeah. My yeah. elastics last me ages. <laughs> well, hybrid elastics definitely last longer than hollows. Definitely. I know Rick's does yeah. like them, but they do. Any hybrids, whatever your preferred hybrid is, is the answer in it? Yeah. They last longer. Um, Paul D, what's the best way to fish for commercial barbel? Oh, you never get to see that anymore. Don't, you don't catch them anymore, do you? Um, mm. Meat and casters and worms, any of the barbels. I like casters more than meat, because barbel are a mad one, isn't it, in commercials, that you rasped it on the top. With a load of noise with casters. Yeah. Ten foot deep, whatever, and your elastic just comes out, doesn't it? They just hook themselves, don't they? They're the best fish in the world to hook. You'd no strike in. He's like, I'm on. Come on. Yeah. Get They're me wild in. Like centers these days, is like they used to be. Forest Lane, has that still got some in? Yeah, but there's three no. billion out to fight them. All uh, right. Uh, yeah, best bait, so meat, casters, worms, that, that kind of thing, isn't it, for them, for barbels? It's be aggressive, isn't it? And you don't need, yeah. like, Heavy rigs, aggressive, don't strike. You can fish like, really heavy as well. You, you don't need to like go find deer or anything, just fish really heavy. Yeah, pull. Proper angry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's some Um Apparently, I'm talking twaddle. I've never, he's never had any line cut through elastic in 40 years. Must have been really old Hydra. No. Told you. Well done. <laughs> well done, <laughs> training. Yeah. So yeah, that's Daddy May, isn't it? Do, Daddy do, May. Do, do you want me to get the top kit with a knot missing where it's cut through? You've not put it on the right side of the knot. How have I lost the knot then? You've not lost you've probably not even tied it in the bloody first place, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> um God, I <laughs> Dang, you make me start like doubting myself now. <laughs> Oh, um, Kyle Clapper, evening lads. Have have you all stopped using Balkan droppers for the tapered shot, shotting? I still use Balkan droppers. I think there's a time and a place for it. I mean, tapered more than anything, but Balkan droppers come into it when you need to get a job done and get straight down to them. That definitely comes into it sometimes. Mm. Uh, could... Um... I've just lost it. Um, my, uh, I'm a pleasure angler trying a margin monster pole for the first time. I have four top kits plus a short kit. How would Jamie elasticate these? Start again. Four. Four and a short stop. And it's a margin pole. Yep. What are they on a Preston one and are they all power ones? I don't, no, as the edge monster. It's not a margin monster. Is that a Matrix one? An edge monster. Edge yeah, monsters. That, Preston. Yeah. Margin monster might be. I thought we had a talk. And then M1 margin pole. I don't know. Anyway, four top kits for edge fishing and a short kit. Short kit. Nah. Leave that in the bag for edge fishing, in it? Unless you want to put really stupid, angry stuff in that. I would, yeah. Yeah. I'd have for pleasure fishing as well. So you want to do a bit of, a bit of everything. I'd have two top kits with 1.8 mil hybrid in. And then I'd have two top kits with a 2.2 mil hybrid in. That's what I do. And that'll give you one, two nice ones for a bit of civilised, smaller fish, odd car. And then I'll give you two angry ones for proper margin. Anything in the snags that's durable and it'll last you a long time. That's what I go with. Yeah. Was it a margin monster? Edge monster? 
Edge monster, but he said margin monster, didn't he? I don't know what we yeah. get. I think... No, no. it'll be edge, edge monster. Edge monster. Not whatever. I'm very confused now. I'm waiting um, to see our new, our new video. It'll be out in two weeks. What I've just caught on one. Oh, yeah. That's very good. Oh, yeah. Yep. Catfish. Go on. Rattle through. I'm going to be done quick. Um, done that one. How would you approach peg one at the Glebe? Oh, oh, oh dear. He's always on it. <laughs> I'm not. I've had it once in my life. It's like the dream peg in it. Oh, it's just so flipping good. Um, I fish a waggler to the boards, not even feeding, just clip it up to the boards and crash an eight mil in on a big heavy waggler, imitating a feeder. It's like a 12 gram waggler clipped up, whack it against them boards with an eight mil on and just keep casting. And then I'd ping six mils up that bank to my left and I'd fish up and down on that. That'd be it. Maybe you're mm-hmm. short enough to get bored and feel like you want to do something else. But you can do whatever you want. It's that good, isn't it? it it's the best peg in the world. It's a special peg, in it? Huh? It is, but I think it's very special in a big event. It's not as special when you've got room. Oh, you know, okay. I don't know if I've noticed that in the festivals. It's not the peg that it is in a qualifier. In a qualifier with every peg, it's it's special. Yeah. You know I mean? When it's got a bit of room, it's not actually the best one. Yep. Mm-hmm. But not um, a bit, yeah. Mark Dickinson, I caught a carp Sunday, but didn't hook it. I caught someone else's flow tie from their snap rig. I was allowed to weigh it in, right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, it happens, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Um, Steve Norbury spoke about Tom but earlier. Um, Daniel Skinner, do you really need top to spend top, top dollar on pellet waggler rods? I use an 11 foot Daiwa tournament, but Andy told me 12 foot is best. Um, on that, can you recommend a pellet waggler rod without getting pluggy so rich you may be best? Mm. It's whatever you feel comfortable with and whatever your budget is, isn't it, with pellet waggler rods? I mean, this would have been from the day on Thursday, wouldn't it? Obviously, I would have taught why an 11 foot sometimes, but 12 foot more often than not comes into play. Um, um, I, said, I said on the day as well, you don't need to spend loads of money you know what I mean it's it's one of them but you do need the extra length for, for that waggler fishing yeah I use so 12 you, Rich, what do you recommend there's what I say I use 12 for, 12 for everything yeah yeah I've still got them old parabolics ones that like the original parabolics that, but I, yeah. I prefer 11s I'm weird you ain't done no waggler fishing they're asking you to recommend waggler fishing <laughs> you know I once smugged a carp on a waggler yeah, let's not go there. Right. No, actually, no, I did it at um, Morelands and Power was across and I was shouted across that he'd be impressed and he didn't seem impressed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say anything, just blank. Um, <laughs> where are we? Um, Jack Cosby Cox. Hi, guys. Just a quick question about the group session. Is that price for the whole group that comes or per person? Yeah, per person, but yeah, use a discount code to get the price. The members get 15% discount on there. Um, did a little uh, what's where's that? I'm going to sat and what I don't know who's uh, Paul's replying to someone, but I don't know where. Um, Faith Eon, do you still get the chance to fish friendly matches without with mates or just enjoy ripping the piss out of each other? Even when we're together, that's the chill up time, isn't it? Or I get Definitely. a little. In the winter, I fish a few open to me, mates. That's nice. Yeah, winter's good, isn't it, for that? Yeah. I feel out of time, in it? Like, January, February. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, bit um, Steve McMurchy, what's the best rods you've ever used for me? It's a Daiwa Connoisseur Tommy Pickering float, 11 to 13. I, I used to be that rod when I was a kid. It had the advert. Mm-hmm. We took everything Tommy Pickering knows and condensed it into 13 feet. That was that, the that, that, That's when he had that picture with his goldfish in his net when it was all them yeah. like little carps and everything. Yeah, yeah. Roy. I remember that. Remember that? Yeah. Love it. That was, yeah. that was my dream rod as a kid. I never owned it, but I was always like, I want that rod. Was it? Oh, man, I've had some right good rods. Um, no marks, definitely my best ever. Titans and uh, Michael Lights just you still can't beat them now. Still phenomenal. Fishy fishing, they were the bestest. Yeah, definitely. 
Oh, uh, Dye were amorphous whiskers as well. They did two amorphous whiskers, like a heavier um, uh, stick floaty one and like a light waggler one. That was amazing too, but no match is still the best, definitely. Was it? That was a special one. Oh. Yeah. There were Not 400 the... quid back in the day, Jay, lad. That was like 25 years ago, 30 yeah. years ago, maybe. Rods were just different. They, they, they were just made for a completely different thing then, weren't they? Yeah. Now they have so much more strength and just different. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, oh, I love that Tommy. I'm going to get that picture out later. That Tommy picking on these goldfish, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. You Ed. Um, last one on this was um, Daniel Skinner. Any tips on Hallcroft Bridge, Bridge Island pool? Are they different ones? No, Bridge. Not mean... Bridge Island. Bridge out in there. But he just mean Bridge pool. Um, fish are skimmers, but um, what a fish on there. I was on the UK Champs, I was on pick 50, which is back onto the Shelleys. It, where it, that was pre-spawning, so I don't know if that... Jimmy Brooks was on there the other day, and I spoke to him. There was loads of massive skimmers feeding on meat shorts. So although you're not going to win the match on them, it's definitely worth having meat shorts at five metres if you drop online. So fish for carp long, shallow one on deck. Just feed four mils. Um, yeah, feed four mils quite heavy, fish shallow around it. And put an eight mil on the hook and go over it on the bottom, and then have meat shorts as well for these skin bobs. Okay, got meat, got yeah, but you've got to be careful though because you're only allowed two or three tins a day for um all craft now. Three, three, I'm sure it's three tins, might be two, but I think it's three. But yeah, feed that, and there's loads of these you can top up with 50 pound of skimmers in the belly match, but because you've only got that much bait, you can't push it for the whole match. So that'd be me dead. Go on. You don't okay. like skimmers anyway. You took them away, Jay. I love doing that. I was so... So there, there's quite a few comments on that video. It's like, if I saw someone like chucking fish back to replace them with bigger That's ones, it, I'd go. they just gone straight to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> so good, that. <laughs> um, got the statement, that, innit? Now I've got too many. Give me a chance. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to fill this net again. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Love it. Oh, so, yeah, we've we've gone on for ages there. It's nearly nine o'clock. We've done um, it. Yeah, I reckon we're pretty much up to date on there. So thank you very much to everyone for watching. Um, Yo. And all the people that have watched but not commented as well, because there's all the random outside world getting to see what goes on. But yeah, we'll be back yes. for next month. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. much. See you next you. month. Thank you. Do, do, do. Oh.